Hello and welcome back to things to take photos of around the house and today I've come out to the garden because the sun is shining and we can't go very far and do great landscapes out here but we can find some interesting things to take pictures of nonetheless. Now today I'm using the Fuji. Often I'll be using the Nikon because I've got more lenses for it but I keep the Fuji as a home camera so it feels a bit less like work and also I'm shooting on my Nikon right now as well so <laughs> makes it kind of harder. But let's have an explore and see what we can find. I have to admit, I'm not much of a gardener. I only really started planting anything in this garden about a year and a half ago. So we've got a few things starting to, to grow in that slightly bare corner over there and a few things over there which I can play with as well. Now for this Lex T20, I've got three main lenses I'm gonna try and use today. First of all is this one. This is the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens upgrade. It's f2.8 at the wide end, but dropping down to f4 at 55 millimeters. And secondly, we've got this one. It's an 18 mm f2. It's got a nice shallow depth of field on this, so we can really sort of isolate things in the, in the bushes. And thirdly, a bit of an oddball one, this. It's a Samyang 8 mm fisheye. It's a manual focus, and I must admit, I've not really had great results with this over the time I've had it, because it looks like it's in focus on the back of the camera very often, but when you look at it on a computer, it's not quite hit the target. Um, so I'll see what I can do with this. It's close focusing, is down to 30 centimeters, so in theory, we should be able to get relatively near to things, stop it down and get a few things uh, sharp and some slightly unusual different perspectives on things. And that's really what we're going to be doing today because the overall picture isn't that great. There's a, only a bit of sort of structural planting just happened and a few things just starting to come up over there. Some palms over here which have weathered the winter and are looking a bit sorry for themselves after all the hail we've had the other day. But we can close in tight on them and make something a bit interesting out of well, what we've got. And being the time of year that it is, most gardens are gonna have some stuff just starting to come out. Even, even if you've only got plant pots around the door, chances are you've got some daffodils or some tulips. If you've got roses, the buds are just starting to appear and, uh, and flourish. And blossoms are on, on fruit trees are just starting to appear, like ornamental cherry trees and things. Those are just starting to happen as well. There's plenty of material you can get out and have a, have a play with. And while the sun's out, we've got some interesting textures and shadows. So we can use that as much as the plants themselves. Now this, I can tell you, is an Acer japonicum, and I can tell you that because I left a tag on it because I would forget otherwise. But it's a really cool tree because it starts off kind of green with a bit of a pinky tinge in the leaves and goes dark red through the year. It's a really interesting thing. It constantly changes, giving you something to take pictures of all year round. But at the moment, we've got these amazing little hanging flowers, which are kind of shrouded by these little umbrellas of leaves as well. So um, I'm gonna try and get it in there with the longer end of this 55 mil lens and um, just try and get something to separate it from the background on the f4 which the um the widest this lens will go but hopefully because they're the little clusters we don't want too shallow a depth of field on that because if we go to f2 you'll only get the front half of the flowers in focus and the back of it will be out of focus so hopefully we'll get enough separation from the background to make it look quite interesting and if we're lucky the sun will come out as well and if we're incredibly lucky that bee will come back and land on this flower but I don't think that will happen. Now I'm right at the close focusing point of this, so I'm almost having to move myself and the camera back and forth to get this into focus. And using the focusing guide in the viewfinder, yeah, listen for the beep. The beep is quite annoying, but it's quite helpful sometimes. And in a moment when the sun comes back out again, it's casting fantastic shadows all across the back of the fence, which looks like a really cool picture, almost on their own right. As soon as these clouds move, I'll grab that shot. Now I've no idea what this plant is called, but it smells like burnt coffee and it looks like a thousand tiny trumpets. It's really quite fascinating. I really do wish I hadn't lost the label because I've just taken some photos of it for a stock library and now I can't tag them but it is going to make some interesting images. Get fairly close, shallow depth of field, try and get some isolating these little trumpety things with the kind of furry leaves behind all out of focus to make an interesting depth of field and perspective. That's good, but I'm going to go for the shallower depth of field and try and get even tighter on it. Now fortunately the plan I had for this corner of the garden was that you could walk a little path through here to some kind of bench or seating area. 
oh, kind of shaded pretty place. Hasn't happened yet, but it will eventually. But it does mean I can walk around here and get the camera in some unusual angles. And I really wish I had a macro because it looks like the trumpets are growing out of the trumpets. This plant is bizarre. Isn't that fantastic? Aren't plants weird? It looks like some kind of Star Wars alien movie floating city kind of thing going on. If this is colorized or put in black and white, this will look really, really unusual. Actually, I also wish I had my Nikon 1.4 as well because that would be really good focusing on really tightly on this. Oh, I need to go find a macro lens really. This is, these plants are incredible. Now the grand plan with these palms is that over years, these two big ones in the middle are going to grow much taller and separate themselves from these smaller sort of ground dwelling palms. And it's all going to be uh, quite interesting and jungly and make a nice separation between the patio. We look like it's somewhere sort of Mediterranean and warm and the rest of the garden, which will look more English and country. In the meantime though, it's a work in progress. And after the hail we had the other day, it's all looking a bit battered. And the background doesn't look too special either with the patio tables and things over there. However, getting in tight, we can find some nice, interesting angles again. If you just look at the repeating shapes and the patterns and the textures on this thing, we can go have a bit of fun with this. First of all, I'm gonna get nice and close on this little bowl. Is it called a bowl or a bulb or something? At the bottom of this palm, because all the hairy kind of weird coconutty texture of it. Get down to F2 again, so we've got virtually no depth of field. That's really cool. Likewise this thing over here, we can do the same thing, we've got this repeating pattern of little kind of cut off old leaves. Get in tight on that. I don't like using the back screen of a camera. I mean, not very stable, but sometimes I mean, you can get the camera places your face doesn't want to go. Remember to use your focus points set it to manual and find somewhere that is not necessarily the centre of the screen for your focus. With an 8mm fisheye on this suddenly becomes a different world entirely. As we've got no autofocus I'm going to set this as tight as I can to the nearest focus point, it's about 25cm, 30cm is marked but it'll go a little closer. And uh, set it down to about F8 to try and get as much in focus as possible. It really accentuates those lines from the leaves. In fact, it even works better in manual on the shutter speed as well, just because it gives you a bit more control. That's a mad photo. And this lens works on this smaller one as well, because you get in there, it's a massively abstract, strange picture all these just leading lines, all these red leaves just are just really harsh geometric shapes. They don't look organic anymore. That's really interesting. I just hope it's in focus. I'll get my own feet out of the frame. Once that's been through Photoshop, that's gonna look incredible. Well, I could be out here for literally hours more taking pictures of everything and I could probably go in and get the other cameras, the other lenses and spend until it gets dark to be perfectly honest. I haven't done this for quite a long time. When I was a teenager there was a really good book by a photographer called Heather Angel. She was quite a, quite a renowned garden photographer um, and that book was called A Camera in the Garden and I read that. I had a lot of really good inspiration and um, yeah I used to really enjoy just spending time with me, the camera, something just static in front just to take a picture. It was great fun. It's something you can have a lot of fun with just on your own in your own time. It's quite relaxing actually. Quite a nice way to escape from other people and the world. Just you and a camera. If you've enjoyed this please hit like, please hit subscribe. Stick it in the comments if you've uh, managed to find some good pictures in your garden at home and I'll see you again next time with more photography on clickbait.